Bosnia and Herzegovina is one of the most underrated countries to visit in Europe, in my opinion. If you haven't been before and if you are looking for an alternative destination in Europe, then I do highly recommend it. The food is fantastic. The prices are more affordable than Western Europe and the people are very friendly. There's also a fascinating history and dramatic nature and landscapes too. So in this video, I'm going to give you six key tips that you need to bear in mind before you visit Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, if any of you have been to Bosnia and Herzegovina before, do drop a comment in the comment section and do let us know some of your key tips that you would recommend and also just a quick message before I get into my personal tips. If you are planning a trip to Bosnia and Herzegovina or anywhere else in the world, we all know that it's very frustrating when you have to get a SIM card in order to get data as soon as you arrive into a country. Now you no longer need to worry about getting SIM cards because what you can do is go to the description of this video, click onto the top link and it will take you to the Breeze eSIM website where you can purchase ready-made data packages for your mobile devices before you land into a new country. It's really convenient, it's really helpful, it saves you a lot of time and hassle as soon as you arrive into a new country. So I highly recommend you do go to the description, click onto that link and you can purchase your data packages today. They're available in over 150 countries and with over 240 mobile networks. Now let's get into my six tips for visiting Bosnia and Herzegovina right now. Now my first tip is that you will need to have some cash available on you. Now the two most visited places in the country are Sarajevo and Mostar and in both Sarajevo and Mostar you will find many restaurants, bars, pubs, cafes that will accept credit card but you will also find some that do not. Now the currency is Bosnian marks so you will need to go to an ATM and take out Bosnian marks in cash when you are in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Or the alternative to that is that you bring some dollars or euros or British pounds of you and exchange that money at one of the exchange shops. So in Sarajevo and Mostar you will see many exchange shops throughout the cities. But I would say that it's very important that you do ask your accommodation, your hotel, your apartment host to recommend an ATM or a currency exchange for you to go to rather than just going to random currency exchanges and ATMs yourself because a lot of these ATMs and currency exchange places charge very high rates and very high commission. So make sure you do ask your apartment host, your hotel, which ones they would recommend. Now, if you are coming from a country which uses euros as currency, do be aware that you can actually pay in euros in some very touristy shops in Mostar or Sarajevo. They will accept euro payments. But of course, do be aware that in these very touristy shops where you can pay in euros, if you are to pay in euros, you will be paying a slightly higher price compared with the price you'd be paying in marks because they will round the exchange rate into their favour. Now, the second tip to bear in mind is for those of you who are arriving into Sarajevo International Airport. There is a bus that takes you from the airport into the city centre. And in 2022, when I visited Sarajevo, the cost was five Bosnian marks, which is roughly about two and a half euros. Once you leave the airport, you will have to walk outside and walk across a few roads until you get to the bus stop. If you are in doubt, do ask a worker at the airport where the bus stop is to get into Sarajevo city centre. Now, as I mentioned on the screen just there, I did have to pay the driver in cash when I did take the bus back in 2022. Now, that may change in the near future. That may have already changed, but I highly doubt it. So do make sure that you do take out some Bosnian marks in cash at the ATM at the airport because you will have to pay the driver in cash. Now, of course, the most convenient way to get from the airport into Sarajevo city centre would be to take a private transfer. But if you can't afford that, the best option would be to use the local bus. There is no underground metro system in Sarajevo. There are trams, but the Sarajevo tram system does not connect the city centre with the airport. There are no trams going from the airport into Sarajevo. So you are limited to either taking the bus or taking a private transfer. I would not recommend you take a taxi because taxis are notorious all around the world for scamming tourists at airports. Now, my tip number three for visiting Bosnia and Herzegovina is to do 
with international bus travel. If you are visiting the country as part of a backpacking trip, you probably will be taking an international bus to leave Bosnia-Herzegovina to go to maybe Croatia or Montenegro. If you are going to be taking an international bus to leave the country, do not get rid of all of your Bosnian marks. You need to have some Bosnian marks spare with you to go onto the bus. First reason for that is because many bus stations in the Balkans region charge you to enter the bus station. You have to pay a bus service fee for the privilege of entering the bus station. Now, this piece of information is especially important for those of you who buy your bus tickets in advance when you're doing a backpacking trip or a traveling trip, because you need to bear in mind that before you enter the bus station, you need to have some spare change on you to pay the service fee. Now, now, if you buy your bus tickets directly at the bus station you can pay the service fee as soon as you buy your ticket but if you are going to pre-book tickets before you go to the bus station online then you do need to be aware that you will pay a fee now if my memory serves me correctly i think when i used sarajevo bus terminal back in 2022 i think the bus terminal fee was two bosnian marks so about one euro but i could be wrong i can't remember exactly now secondly you will also need some extra bosnian marks in cash on you before you use the bus terminal because it's very likely that depending on your bus service provider, you will have to pay to bring your luggage on board, especially if you're bringing a suitcase or a backpack on board, you will be charged to bring that on board in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, I remember that the price in both Sarajevo bus terminal and Mostar bus terminal was two Bosnian marks for a domestic bus journey, but four Bosnian marks for an international bus journey leaving the country. So I definitely recommend that if you are gonna take an international bus leaving the country, or if you're gonna to travel to another city within Bosnia and Herzegovina, make sure you have at least 10 Bosnian marks of cash on you to pay for the fees that you may be charged. And now tip number four before you visit Bosnia and Herzegovina is not to forget the recent history and not to skip out on visiting some of the genocide museums. Now, if you're in Sarajevo, I recommend two museums. Firstly, the Museum of Crimes Against Humanity and Genocide, and secondly, the War Childhood Museum. Now, those two museums are two of the most hard-hitting museums that I've ever been to in my life. You learn so much about the history, so much about the 90s, the Bosnian Wars, the Yugoslav Wars, so I definitely recommend that you go to them. Moreover, if you are in Sarajevo, I do again highly recommend that you book a tour, and I can highly recommend the Bosnian and Yugoslav Wars tour, and I'm going to drop a link in the description to where you can actually purchase tickets for that tour, so if you go to the description, you will be able to go to the link which takes you to where you can buy these tickets. The tour guide is fantastic, you learn so much about the history, you just learn so much more when you have a fantastic fantastic guide, a knowledgeable guide who explains all of the key events during the wars and also takes you around all of the key sites to understand their importance. There are also other tours that you can purchase on that same link too, so definitely check that link out. Now, if you're only going to Mostar and not Sarajevo, there is also a museum in Mostar called the Museum of War and Genocide Victims. Now, personally, I didn't go to this museum, but if you're only going to go to Mostar, I would recommend that you go to at least one museum or at least one tour to do with the recent Yugoslav and Bosnian wars in the 1980s and 1990s. Now, of course, the recent wars do play a big part in the history of the country, but there is also so much more history as well. Bosnia and Herzegovina was under Ottoman rule. It was under Austrian-Hungarian rule. And in fact, Sarajevo is actually known as the Jerusalem of Europe because Sarajevo is the only European city where you can find a Roman Catholic church, an Orthodox Christian church, a mosque and a synagogue all on the same road. And also, if you didn't know, Sarajevo was essentially the birthplace of the First World War because at the time Bosnia and Herzegovina was under the Austro-Hungarian Empire rule and the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire throne was Franz Ferdinand and he was assassinated by a student who supported the breakaway of Bosnia and Herzegovina from Austrian rule and for Bosnia and Herzegovina to join a South Slavic state. For such a small country, there is such a vast amount of history to the country and also such a mixture of cultures due to its history. 
so do not forget to learn more about the history, immerse yourself in the history and the culture of Bosnia and Herzegovina when you are there. Now the fifth tip that you need to be aware of before you come to the country is that the food here is fantastic and it is cheaper than the prices that you have to pay in Western Europe. You absolutely have to try Chavapi when you are in Bosnia and Herzegovina and also when you are in other regions of the Balkans too. Chavapi are these mince meat sausages, they're so tasty you get them with bread, fries and a Kaimak sauce. A Kaimak sauce is kind of like this cream kind of paste. Chavapi are so tasty, they're affordable, they're a great meal, they're very filling so you definitely need to try some. And of course because of the heavy Ottoman influence you get some fantastic fantastic baklava in Bosnia and Herzegovina so don't forget to try a baklava and also have a nice Bosnian coffee with it too you may also get a Turkish delight served with that as well and also if you like a beer you can get yourself a Sarajevsko beer in Sarajevo it is the local beer in Sarajevo and now my sixth and final tip for visiting Bosnia and Herzegovina is do not think that the country is dangerous. Of course, in the 1990s, the country was in the middle of a war and a genocide, but today the country is extremely safe and is one of the safest countries in Europe. Now, I will just give one small safety tip. If you are in, especially Sarajevo and Mostar, the two most visited cities, do be aware that you may get some beggars, especially if you're eating a meal out. You may get some beggars, especially some kids that may come up to you and ask you for money. Now, don't be worried about that. They're not going to harm you. But if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to give anyone any money. But that is just one small safety tip that I would give you. Just be aware that you do get quite a lot of beggars in the country. But other than that, it is definitely one of the safest places that I have ever been to. Now again if you are a local in Bosnia and Herzegovina or if you've been to Bosnia and Herzegovina plenty of times before again do drop a comment below and do let me know some of your tips if you've not already done so just because that will be very helpful to other viewers and travellers who are coming to the country. Now I do certainly hope that you have enjoyed this video if you have make sure you click the like button it really helps the channel so hit the thumbs up button right now and make sure that you do subscribe for more travel content so thanks a lot for watching I'll see you all in the next video.